Sunday nights that we have had preaching. We've been studying about the kingdom of heaven. Beginning with the dream of Nebuchadnezzar of the four great kingdoms. And then about the kingdom of God and the prophecies concerning it. And then we talked about the establishment of the church, the fulfillment of those prophecies. That was last Sunday night. Tonight, we're going to shift gears just a little bit, but we want to stay in the focus of the Lord's kingdom. And we want to speak about greatness in the Lord's kingdom. In our text and that we're going to go to from Matthew chapter 20, beginning in verse 20, read with me down through verse 28. It says, Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to him with their sons, kneeling down and asking something from him. And he said to her, What do you wish? And she said to him, Grant that these two sons of mine may sit, one on your right hand and the other on your left, in your kingdom. And Jesus said, You do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said to him, We are able. And so he said to them, You will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give. But it is for those whom it is prepared by my Father. And when the ten heard it, they were moved with, it, with indignation against the two brothers. And Jesus called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you. But whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the man, son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. As you read down through this text, let's understand this is not the first time, nor will it be the last time, that the apostles were confused, had a mistaken idea about the kingdom of heaven. In their thinking, and Jesus, I believe, points it out to them when he speaks about the Roman government, the governments of the Gentiles. He says the kingdom is not like these earthly kingdoms where one will be greater than another. They had that mistake, thinking one of them would be greater than others. And so Jesus, in this passage, I believe, and some others that we're going to look at tonight, will make it very clear to be great in his kingdom. The key to that greatness is how well one serves those who are around about him. First of all, let's look at this request. James and John made the request. And I know someone's going to say, Brother Ray, did you not read what verse 20 says? Well, I want you to, to look at that. And it does say, the mother of Zebedee's sons came to him with her two sons, kneeling down and asking something from him. Now, if you go to a parallel passage, go over to Mark chapter 10, and I know it's a little bit ahead of where we're at on this point, but go ahead and turn over to chapter 10 of the book of Mark and look at verse 35. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him saying, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. And then the same question is asked. The same request is asked for. Now, Matthew's account makes it seem like the mother of James and John were making this request. 
But Mark goes into a little bit further detail and says the request actually came from James and John, which further illustrates a misunderstanding of how greatness is going to work in the kingdom. If you go back to our text, it doesn't make sense to me, and maybe I'm reading it wrong, but it doesn't make sense to me that the mother of these two men really asked a question. Because Jesus did not address the mother in the answer. Notice who he addressed as he replied to the request. The reply was, you do not know what you ask. And then he asked that question, are you able? Are you able to drink the cup? And so as you look at those answers that Jesus gave, it seems to me that he is directing his statement of greatness to James and John because they came and asked the question. Perhaps they brought their mother along with them for a very simple reason. Jesus would be more likely to grant the request if mom was there, okay? But then you go on further, and let's go and look at how he responds a little bit more in detail. When he asked them the question, if they were able to suffer as he was about to suffer, notice their answer. We are able. Were they really able to suffer as Jesus was going to suffer? Were they going to be able to suffer what he suffered? Was he, were they going to be able to be baptized with the baptism that he was going to be baptized with? And understand something, what Jesus is asking is, is are you able to take my place on the cross? Was any man able to take the place of Jesus on the cross? The answer is no. He does go on in verse 23. And he says, you indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. Jesus says, yes, you are going to suffer. And the reason you're going to suffer is because of what I'm going to do. You're going to suffer because you are one of my apostles. You are one of my followers. You are one of those who's going to continue to stand and teach the truth about who I am. Jesus says you're going to suffer persecution and ultimately, brethren, let's remember, how many of the apostles died of natural causes? Out of the original 12, how many died of natural causes? One that we know of. One that we know of. And that was John, who died in exile. <coughs> But I like what he says at the end of verse 23. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give. Have you really thought about what that section of the verse means? Jesus says, it is not within my authority to grant your request. Who has the authority to grant that request? Only the Father. Only God could grant that request. Jesus, although he says in Matthew 28 that all authority has been given unto him in heaven and on earth. Jesus understood 
his role as the son of God, not being God himself. So he answers these two, and as he responds to James and John, he says, I can't do that, but it is for those for whom it is prepared by my Father. Brother, we ought to understand something, how this idea of greatness in the Lord's kingdom goes all the way back to the establishment of the kingdom. The kingdom was in God's plan. It was God who set forth and set in motion the plan for Jesus to come to purchase the church, the kingdom, with his own blood, according to Acts 20 in verse 28. And because of this request, number three tonight, notice the other apostles' attitude towards James and John. The scripture says that they became indignant indignant they were not pleased go over back over to mark chapter 10 and look at verse 41 and when the ten heard it they began to be greatly displeased with james and john I look at that and I think in my mind James and John were setting out to cause a rivalry between the apostles. And this great displeasure had Jesus granted their request would have caused more division and dissension and the fulfillment of God's plan would not have taken place. You see, when we think of greatness amongst ourselves, who here tonight is the greatest? If I were to go around the room and ask every one of you and you had to give me an answer, and the question is, are you the greatest member of South Jackson? How would you respond? And how would Jesus respond back to you? Because the true reality is we're all equal. We're all equal. We've all come short of the grace and the glory of God. We are all, as members of the kingdom, forgiven because we've obeyed the gospel. No one is greater than any one else. You know, Jesus says who the greatest is. These two individuals wanted the two most prominent positions in the kingdom. One to be Jesus' right-hand man and one to be his left-hand man. The other apostles angry. And so Jesus uses this to teach about greatness in the kingdom. And let's look lastly tonight at the Lord's response to the situation that had developed. Beginning in verse 25. There you see that Jesus refers to the Gentile or the Roman government. And he says and speaks about their different levels of authority. You know, he says, the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. The premise is everyone has a boss. 
everyone in the Roman government reported to someone. Brethren, when we think about greatness in the kingdom, who do we report to? Do you fill out a report and report to me? Do you report to one of the other men? Do you report to, to, to someone else? We all report to God. This is the point Jesus is trying to make as the situation had developed. He refers and he says for them in verse 26, it is not to be among you. You are not to be as the civil authorities. The church is different. And then he goes on at the end of verse 26. He says, Whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. This idea of being prominent, to feel more important than someone else, is strongly condemned in Scripture. Go over to the book of 3 John and begin reading in verse number 9. If this isn't an example of how trying to be more mindful of your position than you are, I don't know what is. John writes, there, uh, I write to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to have the preeminence among them, does not receive us. Therefore, if I come, I will call to mind his deed, which he does, praying against us with malicious words, and not content with that, he himself does not receive the brethren and forbids those who wish to, putting them out of the church. Diotrephes. Judge and jury. Diotrephes was ruining the church because of his attitude of look at me. Look how great I am. I am the most important person here. Without me, the church would fall apart. Uh, I, yes, I understand. Those aren't the words that are written in the Bible, are they? But is that the implication John is giving? Brother John understands that trying to think you're greater than someone else is a sin. We as human beings, we elevate individuals into thinking they are great. I've got to do a better job. When some of you come to me and say that was a great sermon, I've got to do a better job and say to God be the glory. Because it's not about me. I'm just the mouthpiece that God is using to deliver a message. I don't want to ever put myself into a position that Diotrephes was in. Jesus responds, Do not think you're great. When Jesus 
Jesus lays out the qualifications and speaks about elders in 1 Peter chapter 5, in verse number 3, exhorting the elders, he says, nor being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. As I read that, as examples to the flock, the greatest leader is one who is willing to serve, not Lord over. You will do far greater good by serving than anything else you can do. And so you go back to our text, and that's the exact point Jesus makes at the end of verse 26, on down into verse 27. Whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. If someone wants to be first, let them serve. And then look at verse 28. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. In other words, Jesus says, be like me. Can you think of all the great things Jesus did? Think of all of those miracles that he performed. Out of all of the miracles that he performed, how many did he perform to serve himself? I look at many of those cases and I see Jesus saw, Jesus showed compassion to those individuals and he did it by serving them in ways that you and I cannot. But you and I can serve. We can have the attitude of Christ of compassion. And we can reach out to ones whom we see that are in need. And we can serve. Because, brother, to be great in the kingdom of God is to serve. That's the message Jesus tells James and John. How do we begin this life of service? You remember what Jesus told Nicodemus, except you be born again, except you be born of the water and of the spirit. One must obey, one must be baptized, into Christ. And after we enter the kingdom, after we gain access to the kingdom, the way to become great, and remember, your greatness is only to be shown before God, not before men. The way to do it is to go about serving others. And remember, serving others in secret is a good way to do it. Don't let everybody know what you do. You don't have to go around trying to break your arm to pat yourself on the back. God knows what you've done, and that's important. And so serving others, as Jesus illustrates to us in Matthew chapter 25, there on the day of judgment, 
when we ask you, Jesus, when did we see that you were hungry? When did we see that you were thirsty? When did we see that you were sick? When did we see it? Jesus said, what does he say? When you did it to the least of one of these, you did it to me. In other words, Jesus says, serve. Tonight, where are you at in your walk? Are you a member of the body of Christ? If not, we can add you. We can have the Lord add you tonight as we baptize you for the remission of your sins. Or if you've done that and you've let yourself fall away, Maybe you've thought too much of yourself and you need to have your uh, self trimmed down a few notches. And you've allowed that greatness of your mind to uh, fester into sin. You can come home tonight asking for forgiveness through repentance and confession. Whatever your need is, our prayer is just we come while we stand and while we sing.